Well, Mark, you, the team has conceded four goals this season. Two have been from worldies. One's been a penalty, and uh, one's obviously come from a set piece. And if you analyse the games in terms of teams opening you up, you'd be very happy with how things have gone. But I guess as a defender, four goals conceded is, is what the people look at. <laughs> Yeah, I mean the stats obviously don't look great, but I mean, you know, if you if you watched every game that we've played in so far, then like you say, I think you you look at them and we, we've not really been opened up mm. as a um, defensive unit yet um, consistently. It's not as though we're, you know, conceding uh, loads of chances to other teams. So I think we have been defensively quite solid actually, which mm. obviously doesn't, you know, mirror the uh, the stats. And like you say, the, the 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 goals that have gone in have been, you know, very good finish and obviously the the dubious penalty at the weekend so um, I think in terms of the way that things are going I mean the manager just said that and all the lads agree as well is that um, we are playing well they're just you know little yeah. things that we need to tweak and we're, we're inches away off uh, being you know a really good team which we know we are um, and we know we've got players that can produce and you know defensively like I say we've been we've been you know fairly solid so we're, we're not far away off being where we, we need to be. Yeah, Pimmy, I think, has made two saves in the last two games other than the goals that have obviously gone in and obviously couldn't do a lot about any of those finishes. Is, as a defender, is that almost more frustrating that that's happening? Or is it a case of you could just have to take the positives and say, well, look, we've, we've stopped Fleetwood and Sunderland, two sides you'd expect to be up there towards the end of the season, to create anything of any real note in open play? It's frustrating on the day, I think, more so than when actually, you know, it settled, the, the dust settles mm. a little bit and you think about it and you actually think, well, hang on a minute, we're not actually conceding too many chances against... You know, good teams. You know, Sunderland and, and Fleetwood, were, were, you'd like to think, are going to be there or thereabouts this year. Um, so, it, it, yeah, it's frustrating, but I think um, we all know football. It's one of them. I think it, the tide's going to change eventually, and uh, I'm sure we will start, you know, scoring the goals that we were certainly last year, and um, get, like I say, get get back to where we need to be. Yeah, without dreading too much on the penalty, because I know everybody was frustrated in the manner that it was given. Um, did you were you happy with as a captain of the side the response that the team showed after that? Because you could have easily a gone under or b let the frustration of the fact that the penalty went against us. But you you were persistent and consistent with your approach, to try and get back into the game. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there were like any football match, there were spells during the game where we were good, and mm. you have to weather. So we're away at Sunderland, so there's going to be spells where they're going to have the ball and. We cope with that really well, uh, but I mean, in terms of when the ball went, went in, uh, I had no doubt that we'd you know mm. pick ourselves up and, and and get at them because we showed that against Fleetwood. Um, you know, going one 0 down. I think even when we got the equaliser against Fleetwood, mm. I think a lot of teams had, had been you know, ninety first minute. We've got an equaliser. Mm. Happy days. It's, we've come from behind and got a point. But you know, Jack, he, he you know, a great finish and he's picked the ball out of the net and we've gone again and managed to get the winner um, and that was exactly the same against uh, Sunderland. It was a decision that, you know, very dubious and um, everyone will have their own opinion on it um, but not to speak about it too much. It obviously affected the game, there was not, nothing much in the game for me. I think if anyone was going to get a goal it, it was probably us. Uh, we, we dominated large large parts of that game and uh, I think a goal was probably coming. Uh, but again, I think it's we're so close to turning that that screw and uh, and being a really really good team and getting to where we need to be. Was it weird playing in, in such a big stadium in, in the manner that it was on Saturday with nobody there? I know we, we played a number of games behind closed doors, but in the main, they've either been home games or at smaller grounds. You look at that arena that you're in on Saturday, and to be able to hear the gaffer shouting instructions must have been surreal. It is, yeah, but I mean it's the same. I say in in, in any other ground really. Yeah. Um, no fans there. It's very strange. It's just, it's got that pre-season feel to it. And like I said before in an interview, that we've got to generate our own mm. atmosphere. And and uh, it is a league game, so we've we've got to, you know, obviously we've got to treat it like a league game. It is a league game, um, but it's tough to to generate that. Because uh, I mean, the fans are massive in any game, mm. um, whether it's going well or not so well. The atmosphere is it's big and it does affect the games and. Playing in league games now, and there's no fans. You, you can see the difference; it's massive. Um, but I think by the first game, um, I think the, kind of, the lads are kind of getting used to it now. Um, it's something that we're going to have to get used to for for a while, by the looks. Um, hopefully, not too long. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it, it's very strange. I think it's even the fact that like on Saturday, for example, you're in the media suite, kicked us out, and you're in a big big media suite. It's not a dressing room. It's not pegs or anything along those lines. Yeah. Even the mentality of that is different. And and I guess you only really know you 
in a game, so to speak, when you're on the pitch as opposed to the whole you know, atmosphere of a match day. Yeah, the build-up's obviously a lot different. Like I said, we're going into a room where there's no pegs or anything, no pigeonholes, mm -hmm. and you usually sat in a changing room and you know, showers are there and all that's changed. But you've kind of just got to get on with it because it is what mm -hmm. it is. Uh, we, we, we get put where, wherever we need to be. and Nothing changes when you walk over the, the, the white line. It's a, mm -hmm. it's a game of football and, you know, preparation, we, we do what we can. Um, and uh, you know the prep's been good as, as well as it can be anyway. Um, but yeah, uh, it's, it's just one of the things we have to deal with. And um, like I said, the lads are getting used to it now. Swindon at home on Saturday, a team obviously got, came up from, from the league below. Obviously, the majority of their goals were scored by players that aren't there at this moment in time. But they've brought in a lot of good players and they'll be a threat, won't they, on Saturday? They will. I mean, there's, there are quite a few teams now that have brought in new players mm. as opposed to... You know, looking at the teams uh, that were in this league from last season, um, obviously they're, they're newly promoted and uh, you know, I think they've got a, a decent start as well, they've, they've scored a few goals, so they're going to be a threat, um, but we'll you know, treat this game as any other, we'll be looking at their strengths and weaknesses throughout the week and working on what we need to do, and um, I have no doubt in my mind that you know, we'll be, we're at home as well, uh, obviously we enjoy playing at home, uh, we've got a good record, record at home, so hopefully that, that can continue. And just finally, as a family man, we, we've been dealing with the situation that we are in the world at this moment in time. Obviously, you've got family, young family as well. It, it must be so hard. Is football kind of a release, or is it uh, something that you, you know, you're thinking about what's going on at home and all that kind of stuff? Because obviously, you're not from around here either. So you, mm. the, the north of England's under severe restrictions. What we are down south, is, is that something that plays on your mind at all? Um, to be honest with you, I mean, where I live, it's it's, it's quite. Normal, actually, to be honest. I mean, it was not, you know, lockdowns or anything where where I live, um, and it's quite normal in the sense that my little girl's still going to school, my little boy's mm. going to nursery, so that's normal for us. And after that, it's, you know, back home and the carnage between four and seven. Like it's just it, that's normal to us anyway. So mm. it's quite normal at the minute. Um, obviously, them them going back at lockdown was completely different, but mm. now it's um, it's a bit more normal. So I don't really notice too much. Um, it's good for my kids to get out and uh, you know get that um, get play time kind of thing. Get out of the house, full stop. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but no, it's 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 what it is, isn't it? And um, you know, over lockdown, it was nice to spend spend time with them for a certain amount of time. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's quite normal to be honest. Uh, it's it's everyday routine for us uh, um, as it stands now.